Welcome to the Totally Awesome Fishing Show. I'm here down at a big, huge, well, inland water, a reservoir, almost like a sea, called Chew Valley. I'm here to try and catch trout. Now, this is a really, really big water, so it's not like a lot of the smaller still waters I would normally go to. Um, I don't even, I may have bank fished it once, I've never boat fished it, but it's fantastic weather. It's not what you would think are considered to be the greatest for trout fishing because it is blue sky flat calm no breeze but they tell me the fish are up on the top and that's what really matters so i'm going to give it a go and they give me a couple of flies here to try most important i'm going to be in a boat which i love you know me and boats i'm going to be out in a boat alone in a boat on chew reservoir so just so people know here you can get regular day tickets and you can bank fish you can fish off the bank down there anywhere they'll have designated zones just go in the tackle shop up there if you don't know anything about fly fishing i'm sure the tackle shop's going to help you as well if you go in there they get you sorted out with the right equipment rods reels and the most important thing flies leaders which is the end of the fishing line and you can see here what a beautiful setting life jackets are a must i've got my own i hope i can start this boat i mean i do love fishing in boats as you all guys know And already I'm feeling better. I had an awful drive. It's such a horrendous traffic drive. I drove around it twice trying to find out how to get into it. But down here, you might be able to see them. Millions and millions and millions of small fry. Some of them are even flashing. Just doing this. There's a lot of fish down there. All bait fish for big trout. And they do actually get monstrous pike in here as well. And big perch, big everything. There, you might be able to see that shoal going past there outboard in the shadow there so no shortage of food but we're going to be looking for fish just rising out here drifting through there's a dimple over there oh man let's get in the boat and get this rod rigged up late enough in the day as it is well for those of you who want a bit of knowledge about boat this is a scoop for bailing out you obviously got the anchor there if you want anchor you've got the fuel tank when you have the fuel tank like this i know you're renting just make sure there's fuel in the tank and release the breather valve at the top you've got the breather valve you see just there what you can do is you can tighten it down and then just open it up a few turns so you know it's open the fuel line make sure you're not got kinks or anything like that in it it's all standard boat stuff you know i mean obviously i've been around boats quite a bit but just call your bulb make sure the flow the arrow should be rigged up that way and that pumps the fuel there and you just pump it until it's hard you know so that it goes firm that means it's pumped all the fuel up into here one of the main problems people have when they can't start boats is they don't have that clip in there. This is the kill switch. All right, so this should be clipped onto me. And then should I be running along and I fall over the side, bang, that comes off and that will kill the engine. There's a choke there which we won't need because it's hot, forward, backwards, neutral. They'll explain it to you. I've just seen a load of perch down there, guys. <laughs> it's terrible, isn't it? So give this guy a pull with no choke. Okay, I just let the engine warm for a second before you go away. Just give it, you know, don't go roaring away straight away, especially in cold weather, which is not today. It seems very, very untrout fishy weather for me on a reservoir, huge water like this, but they tell me there's a real chance of catching trout because they're on the surface. Now, see if I can work this out. And away we go. Curl it up. This rope should always be short, what well, you call your painter, should always be shorter than the propeller so it doesn't go around the propeller at the back. Make sure everything's down, doesn't fall off. In fact, I'll put that there. Again, life jackets have to be worn. So I just give it a little blip, drop it in gear. And you can just ease it out like this, look. Hopefully you can see it. With 
boats, everything slow is fine. There are no brakes on a boat. It beats rowing, guys. And do you know what? Although the day started off really bad with the traffic, I shan't be going through Bristol anytime soon, that's for certain. I've had two circuits on the outside of the lake, so let's see what's on the inside. I'm just going to pop that out, so I don't want to put any fish down. What a day. It is idyllic. Are the guys in boats over there? I'm just going to go out there. That's a big uh, yachting area. They do yachting. They won't be doing yachting today. With this wind, they are going nowhere. The other thing you want to do is make sure there's always water jetting out here. This is a cooling water. Okay, so that goes around the engine, sucks it up, cools the engine, comes out here. You want to make sure you've always got a jet running before you leave the harbour jetty mooring generally. There you can see what a fantastic view they've got from that lodge, the fishing lodge, all the boats there. Great big expanse. Great big expanse of water. A little bit of colour, they said, in the water. There's a tinge of colour in it, sort of bloom. But apparently the fish are up near the surface. We have a little squirt. More than fast enough, especially in windy weather. Look at the expanse I've got. Do you know I don't think there's a cloud in the sky, it's a massive high pressure. Fish just to the left of me, just there moved. Loads and loads of birds up there. Another fish moves in front of me, so I'm just going to kill the, kill the, sound, the uh, sound of the engine a little bit. There's a mass of birds over there, there must be weed. Right, I'm going to set. The, kill the engine in a minute, I'll show you how we stop it. This apparently is an island worth fishing around. I've seen lots of weed, lots of weed growing up on the surface, and so maybe it's not quite so. There's weed there, look, coming up from the surface. If I stand up, you should be able to see some of that weed. See if we can spot some more for you. So, what I do now, boat goes into neutral. You stop the engine, you press a button. Peace envelops you. Look at the weed here. Obviously not 50 feet deep here, or maybe it is, and the weed's growing 49 feet. It is so peaceful. Unbelievable. People ask you why you go fishing. This is why you go fishing. Right, I've sort of, uh, sort of geared up, guys. I'll run through it briefly. I know some people like rods and reels. This is my bonefish rod. It was made by Martek of England. Don't sell them, I've probably not even made now. And that's all it says. It just says it just says Martech of England. I don't think it's got a size weight or anything, but I use it for bonefish, barracuda, stuff like that. Uh, regular old beaten up intrepid rim fly of hundred years old, a hundred and fifty year old line. Should be, should be a floater. And then I've got my from my fly line, I've got my leader here. Okay, you know, I fish short leaders normally nine feet, they say put a long leader on. I put the main fly up here, which is a, a sort of a tractor, it goes across the surface. Let me just show you. Look, just sits on the surface like this and you just fish it slowly. Then the next one, which they say this is the fly it takes, you get most takes on, is this tiny weeny one. <clears throat> Don't know the name of this, I should have asked. But I'm sure if the trout eat it, they're not asking the name of it. So that one. See, it just goes under the surface there. This one's still on the surface. And what I call a tail fly here is just a regular one they call a booby with two foam eyeballs, which when it gets wet might have a bit of movement to it, I don't know. Just like that. Hopefully you can see that there. And they said fish it very, very slow. So that's the breakdown of it. I've also, now what, let me just tell you, I extended that lead and I'm now on 2x, whatever it is, eight pound, sight free, so old I've worn the thing off. But I think it's fluorocarbon, I don't know. I'm not a lover of fluorocarbon, I find it very brittle. Sometimes it breaks on the knots. I'm not, I'm not a lover of it, I'll be perfectly honest. I'm just gonna try and feel where the 
wind is drifting to and I'm using that boy as a marker so it's actually I could afford to turn the boat without starting the engine look he says why would I use the engine when I'm in position I've been tackling up for 15 minutes look I'm just going to move that bow around so that any air movement I can tell by the smoke up on that hill it wants that the air movements this way so I figure going by that boy I'm going to be drifting this way subtle things I know nothing of which I talk except fishing talk but that's how I'm approaching it as a sort of nun reservoir trout fisherman I can't tell you how few times I go reservoir fishing for trout I think I'm going to keep my waistcoat here I'll keep taking more and more clothes off so there if you sort of see it they call it washing line so that's how I've rigged up maybe my lead is not long enough I don't know I don't know sure sure to get some wind knots in the leader right let's pop this puppy out there let me see the bottom there my god I can see the bottom how shallow is this place good lord alive I'm shocked look how far out I'm in the middle of the reservoir and it is four feet deep I just hope I don't see a giant pike laying there it's not pike time they do do pike fishing here I'm just trying to get a gauge of how that team of flies. Oh my god, they even landed straight. I'm going to put it in the roll lock for a second. Be, be aware you could lose a rod doing this. I'm also going to put my polarizing glasses on now. I've seen the bottom here. More for safety. I do wear glasses, otherwise, that's probably what I got lost this morning. Arguing with that sat nav woman. What a pain she is. How can she not know where the main fishing lodge is? I cannot believe how, that depth there. So now for me, I've got my polarizing glasses and I can see through the water. I'm going to put my cap on as well. I generally try and wear polarizing glasses because, you know, you could actually get a fly in your eye. So be careful. And it, it's not that I need to spot fish. It just makes you get less of a headache. But I'm so used to visual fishing for trout. So this will be unusual, fishing totally blind. And just hopefully we drift across some fish. One will do made a rash mistake saying I would have a delightful day if I had three fish. I think we're settled for breaking the duck first. I'm fascinated by the bottom now. Boys, it's baking hot. I've been here. What have we had? 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, two and a half hours. Haven't had a pull. I've seen a fish dimpling around me. I haven't seen one or two, three boats. I've been keeping an eye on in distance. I haven't seen a fish caught. And the rod and line lays limp in the water. Well, the rod's not limp in the water. It's me that's limp, but I'm out of the water. So I don't know what to do. I don't know to stick with this team of flies or to go and put either a straight dry fly on and just cast to a, a fish I see rise or I don't know whether to go deep and lure fish I don't know what to do that is the thing with reservoir fishing it's so diverse you've got to find the fish to start with and I'm it's just dimple here and then there's a dimple 200 yards away there's no uh, hot spot that I can see of anyway 
There's another gentleman over there. He's probably moved more times than I have, and I've moved all over the place. I haven't been right around the reservoir, but I might have to go and have a little poke around. I'm more fascinated by what might be in those shallows creeping around. That's because I do so much visual trout fishing. I'm just so used to seeing fish. That's the problem. These go, then they'll go for lunch. I don't blame them. I don't, I'm not going for lunch. I'm going to stay out. Okay, now these are the stop ponds or stop nets that they keep on the reservoir on site, as you can see, so that they can always top up. Now in a reservoir, they keep their stock in there. They're going to put, I'm going to guess and say, a thousand fish in at a go. I don't know. Every reservoir is different. But they put a big number of, let's say, pound and a half fish to two pound fish, a few bigger ones. So they're going for bulk um, and in bulk injection of fish of a standard, fairly much a standard size, in the hope that they can grow on and get larger in the reservoir uh, with natural food. They've got natural food in there. It's a big expanse of water. So although you think it's a wild fisher in there, there will be, I guess, if that's a few wild fish in there, the majority of fishing will be with stocked fish. They have to be stocked, they have to be replenished. And as the anglers catch them and keep them for eating, then that is recording on a tag, or not a tag, a return card. And thereby, if there's been 50 fish come out of a certain weight, they know to stock again. And the stocking in a big reservoir is, I'm going to say fairly varied. I'm not particularly saying it's once a month. I don't know when it would be. Each reservoir is different. But generally, it's not going to be on a daily basis. The fish are there. They're stocked. Uh, obviously, it's going to take the anglers a while to track them down, find them and catch them. Well, I had a few uh, zeds for 10 minutes, 15 minutes down here before they got mown down by some yachtsmen. <laughs> Young kids out learning, training them over here. They got instructors with them, luckily, or one of them has. But I had a better, better bit of luck, really. Uh, which sort of is, we've all had these days, haven't we? <laughs> we've all had these days. So I'm casting away for the 10,000th time. I thought I'd try my better fly rod. The intermediate line, which I've had years. Very nice. Just thought, I just, oh no, it's come on my feet. Oh no, just, come on, oh, just tug it, tug it. Snap, just snapped my best fly line that I've had. 25 years or more. So, the day gets better and better. I had one tiny little bump, I think, off a perch or something like that, it might have been. But I'm just drifting along and uh, enjoying the day, sort of. I'm sure you've all had days like this. I've actually been around the entire reservoir driving twice, trying to find the entrance. And in the end, I had to stop in a village and they said, look, we'll take you there. It is tricky because it's not like big fishing here. It doesn't say anything like that. It just says the name of the lodge. Anyway, I'm here now. I fear, I fear, I fear a blank. I fear a total blank. I really do. Now, you can keep eight fish here. On the day two, you can keep eight fish. So I thought, don't be greedy, Graham. Don't be greedy. Eight fish. Okay, all the, all the regulars probably do that every day. Just be honest three i thought three no it's a uh, quarter to four and i'm looking at one to salvage a blank at the moment maybe maybe i hang on to the last hour so i'm saving my elbow from casting the bank guys have all packed up and gone home so whether that's because they've all had their eight fish or because they've been struggling is what i don't know but there's a nice ripple on it now so i'd say we're good for fishing well it should be i'm going to go back up by the cages and drift down this way because that that was a way that I'd seen fish rising. Just give it another go. Just got to see the day out.
it's it's only a tiddler guys it's it's could could save the blank i was just about dozing off calling it quits and i've had this tiniest of takes look at this mess i'm in microphone leads i just have to go for that i think it's a good chance i'll end up losing this fish today is the day of days come off surely over goes the microphone I don't think I've had a day fishing like this to be honest I've got to try and I've lost I've lost good fish I thought I was going to catch but this one's suddenly picking up right I've now I've got some semblance of, of normality here people I just have a bad feeling it's going to fall off anyway I've got to be honest I thought the fish was about half a pound but it's, it suddenly took off don't think it's half a pound. Wow, what's going on? I don't see it being a big fish. I don't see it being a big fish on this rod, but you don't know. It's a reservoir, it's a reservoir. The fish are generally believed to fight hard. He's already been leaping out the water. Right, I'm just gonna stand up for this one, people. I cannot tell you, I know I haven't got the fish, but at least to feel that that take. It's gonna be a silver one. It's coming, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming. Just give me a break. One fish would settle the day down nicely. Tell you what, he's pulled for his weight, I have to say. And he's taken the tail fly, which is what the fishery guy in the shop said they probably would take. Yeah, it's not a big fish, man. It's not a big fish. Fought really well. Really did fight well. He's still going. Rainbow. Here he comes. Mr. Rainbow coming in. Come and see Uncle Graham totally awesome people. <laughs> oh, I could almost... I could, I could almost... I was bigger than I thought. I could almost cry with joy. Oh my god, it's like having a tax refund. Well, they don't come along very often either. So, let me just dispatch this one for you people. I had in fact written the day off as a blank, but there you go. Really nice looking rainbow trout. My first one from Chew. <laughs> That's probably going to be the last. The way the fishing's been going for me today, I don't think you're going to get any more. I'll just take the one. I know I said three, and they give you a limit of eight. I've got no chance. Their stock is safe with me. I won't be getting eight. Lovely, lovely fish to catch. Do you know what? That was fishing so slow, it was like a bump from a tiny half pound trout. I really thought it was a small fish. It was a couple of pounds, I guess. Going to eat well. Might even go on Mike's barbecue. I might keep that one for Mike. Might even go down to the Saxon house on TA Outdoors and be grilled whole. Right, a few more casts, I feel. Well, needless to say, I've not had any more trout and I've hung on and hung on. I was just looking over there because there's a little bit of a, a breeze picked up now. There's either a man with an exceedingly large tent or there's a hot air balloon about to go up. Well, boys, I did tough out. I stayed as long as I could. It's gone six o'clock now, so way past my bedtime. But with a three-hour journey back, um, I'm on the way back, as you can see. So you see, that's what we call a big water here in the UK. It's a reservoir. Now, 
try and think of it like this. It's a huge, vast expanse of water. Therefore, for the anglers to catch fish, they have to put a lot of fish in. It's technically or financially not viable to put a lot of really big fish in because it wouldn't be cost effective for the people to get the return on their investment from putting the trout in. If they put giant big trout in, it's going to cost them a fortune. So let's turn that on its head and look at an alternative way of going fishing, trout fishing as well. You've got the beauty and the expanse of the open water. Okay, that's great. You saw I struggled. Why? Because, you know, basically, I don't fish reservoirs a lot. If you fish reservoirs a lot, big open waters, you know where the fish are, you know what flies they're taking. So how do you condense that to give you some sort of success? You can go to the many, many still waters, small still waters, whereby they can afford to put bigger fish in, but less of them. So the don I suppose the density per acre, I think, is what they go by. That's what they work on. How many fish can they put in the water? You know, the anglers have to catch a fish. It's no good for any fishery to put trout into the water and they just stay there. They need the anglers to catch them so they get the return business. So I've come to Diva Springs, which is the fast other end of the scale. It's a big fish water, two lakes here. More anglers, you know, per density is higher. The density of bigger fish is higher. I'm gonna see if I can catch a big one and trust me, there's some lumps swimming around here. But I'm gonna be using a heavily weighted, I haven't got the team of three, you're not allowed to fish teams of three or many waters, uh, small still waters, because the difference being, you've got those three flies that I showed you, the team of flies, yes, that's okay, but here, hang on, there's some very big fish. Now, if you have one fly here, the trout takes it, and while you're fighting, the other fly's dragging through the water, and then along comes another big trout and grabs it, you're just gonna get broken off. It doesn't do anybody any good, doesn't do the fish any good, you know, the fish are there to be caught by the anglers, not just broken off. So it's one fly only. In this case, I've got a pearly daddy fly on there. Gonna give it a go. I've got maybe three hours of fishing because the light, and I, look, I can fish all day, but I've got about three hours of decent light before the rain comes in. And there's quite a few anglers here today. I assume they think exactly the same. Let's get some fishing time in while we can. Now the stock in here is done on a daily basis. On the reservoirs, they would stock much more intermittently, but they're gonna stock daily here. They can afford to stock daily, and they watch the catch returns. The fish that are taken out are generally replaced on a daily basis. Okay, another advantage you've got here is I can actually go around and see the fish. I can spot the fish. It's shallow water. I could see the fish in tube, but they were dimpling on the surface. I couldn't physically see the fish, but in the clear waters like this, you can see the fish. I can tell you now, there's a real, there's a real lump just swimming out in front of me. Rainbow trout, I would imagine. Let's get that fly in the water. Ordinarily, folks, I wouldn't be entertaining fish in this swim because you've got marginal weed there, but I can see this fish. Sometimes I get incredibly lucky. I might even get a hook up on camera. You never know. That's about two or three feet in front of him. Uh, is he taking it? No. Nice big fish though, people. He's right on the edge. You might just be able to see him if I turn that camera. I've got polarizing glasses on. Oh, here we go. Here we go, peeps. Tangle time. The fish, if you just look, it's just down on the edge of that weed. Okay, you can see here the fish are being netted up and shortened up. Exactly the same, exactly the same. Here's the reservoir stock pond. So one is a huge expanse of water, massive great big expanse of water. Yes, they have to hold stock to replenish what the anglers take. It's the same here on the small water, except holy cow, look at the size of these fish. These fish are kept in a similar stock pond situation as a reservoir, but they're bought in bigger. They are fed on over a long period of time this thing looks like Godzilla. Now these are stocked on a daily basis, bigger fish, so you know your chances of catching a big fish 
are fairly high, but if they put, let's say, a thousand small fish in a reservoir, they're not putting a thousand big fish in a small water. The density wouldn't take it. But I'm just trying to illustrate the types of different trout fishing you can get. The big water fishing, or like this, a small water fishing with some big fish. And this fishery does have some exceedingly big fish in there. The big advantage you get small waters is yes, you can occasionally you're going to see these fish in there and that is what you are paying your day ticket price for is the ability to see visually some really large trout which gives you a good chance of catching them because you can present the fly at whatever depth uh, and retrieve it at whatever speed you want and directly see the reaction from that trout. And you can see here, I'm casting barely, what, 10, 20 feet out was on the reservoir you need to cast a long distance generally to cover more water. Here in the small water, you're gonna see the fish, they're gonna be fairly close to you, so you do short cast. You're trying to target, pick up the line, pick up the fly, and present it to the fish possibly as many times as you can and as delicately as you can. Well, people, I finally got one. I had to go down to a really small fly. Oh, it, was, it was the lake of a hundred casts. Well, I've messed around with the camera quite long enough. I'm trying to get this fish in. This is, uh, I think it's the other side of four pounds. Nice rainbow. It's going really, oh, it always going for the weed. Here we go. I have a bad feeling, bad feeling today. Come on fish, come on fish. You just want to show people the difference between large water fish, and you can get some really big fish in reservoirs, but they have to feed on other fish. Here he comes, here he comes. See if we can get him. Oh, he's out the net. I've messed up, guys, I've messed up. Now he's woken up. Now he's woken right up. See if I can get him this time. I got him, I got him, I got him. Yeah, this is a nice fish, boys. Let me just dispatch it for you and I'll show them to you. Well, there we go, you can see the fly just in the corner. It's called When All Else Fails. It's like, almost like a nothing fly, really. Quite a dark, dark colored one there. Now, one thing you want to do, which I didn't do this time, but I should have done it, is the fly is still here, the net's there. You're going to hit the fish on the head to dispatch it. You could have your leader there across there and you weaken it. So make sure if you can, to get that fly out first, uh, get the fly out first, then keep your leader well out of the way so that when you uh, dispatch a fish you don't hit the leader by mistake and weaken it. So there you go, that is a really nice small water trout. Again look I haven't had loads of trout like a chew, I have one fish, lovely silver fish that scrapped hard, but here you can see a much much bigger fish. So, in other words, if you can see the trout, you're increasing your chances, not just for size, but for the fact that you're targeting the fly in front of the trout. In the reservoir, you're only going to see on the surface when they take those little rises, you think, right, there's a fish cast towards it. Fine, there were plenty of fish in chew, don't worry, they were there. I just couldn't catch them, I couldn't get... When they did that first rise, I didn't know if they were going right, left, sideways. Here, in clear water, as long as it's still, I can actually lead the fish. So if the fish does take a fly off the surface or take a nymph, I can see which way he's going. I can target it much more efficiently. I figure this fish is going to go four pounds 12. I think he's just shy of five. I have seen some big ones in here. I've seen some frighteningly big ones. Whoa, result people. One from a big water, one from a small water.
Well, I managed to get a fish hooked up. I've lost uh, one other one on a small red firebird. And I went back to that original fly I used, which is that pearly daddy. And I've got to say, a really big fish hook. I did say I saw some big ones. This is a nice big fat one. If we get it in. Well, sorry I couldn't show you that uh, scrap with that big fish, but it is a huge lump. Battery went out and I didn't put batteries in my pocket. Nobody's fault but my own. I can't tell you how many times I've done it. This fish is unbelievable. That is a big rainbow trout. What do you think? It's got to be eight and a half, eight twelve, something like that. That's a big one, all right. Anyway, we're going to get him up on the scale, see what he weighs, see what he weighs with the other one. Pretty good little session. That's a nice fish. Right, I've got to load these puppies up now. Look at the size of that one. That is a big fish. The rain's starting to come in now. The, the light is actually quite good for seeing across on this side. There's a fish down there. Um, good light. I think because the cloud up here is even now and it's not white cloud. The worst thing is white cloud. But at least if it's dark cloud you can get a bit of shadow line as well. Right, let's weigh this one first. I'm going to say this is 412 to 5 pounds, people, this one. And he is. Oh man, I was out there. About 5, 6, about 5 pounds, 6. Wow, nice fish. Well, if that's 5, 6, well, I'm not going to say what I think that one might go. I think this one. You know what I'm thinking, people. You know what I'm thinking, don't you? You know what I'm thinking. You know what I'm thinking. You know what I'm hoping. You know what I'm hoping. I think we might just shade it. Oh no! There's the ten pounds. Will be a double. About nine six. Wow. That's indeed nine and a half. I'm gonna call it nine pounds six ounces. Nine pounds six ounce. Diva rainbows. So what a successful bit of fishing I've had, and able to show you guys. Small water fishing here, and big water fishing as well. Luckily, I caught on both. Here we go, already on the cleaning board. And those, I believe these two are gonna to go to the smokers. Well, thanks for watching the Totally Awesome Fishing Show. The weather, as you can see, has shut me down, and another ex-hurricane coming through. Gonna be wind and rain, so I've really managed to luck out this morning and, uh, and to get those two nice fish, one of which was way bigger than I thought it was. We'll see you again in the next show. Who knows where it'll be, but there will be water involved. And please don't forget to hit subscribe, like, all those lovely buttons for Mike's Tea Outdoors. Me, I'm going up here into the lodge. It's 25 to 3. I haven't even eaten anything yet, but that's what fishing is all about. You guys know that. That's why you're watching this show. See you next time. <laughs> <laughs>